And then we also have a story headline, Zanupia fails to get two-thirds majority in parliament. The ruling Zanupia failed to achieve the two-thirds majority it sought in parliament, winning 136 of the 209 National Assembly seats contested with the Citizens Coalition for Change, Triple C, managing 73. There are 210 seats in the National Assembly elected by secret ballot into which Zimbabwe is divided and one seat is outstanding in Gutu West following the death of an election candidate and will be filled through a, a by-election at a date to be advised. So uh, this year's NPA failed to clinch a single seat in Blaue where Triple Seat won all 12 parliamentary seats, making a huge comeback after an initial nomination disqualification for late filing by the High Court was was reversed by the Supreme Court. Right, Bupra calls on new Bulawayo councillors to focus on service delivery. The Bulawayo Progressive Residents Association, Bupra, has called on the newly elected councillors to focus on improving service delivery in the city. In a statement made by Bupra coordinator, uh, Permanent Ngoma uh, said the association believes that the city can only progress if there's a meaningful participation of all residents and all the relevant stakeholders. In just quote the statement, says, Bupra strongly believes that meaningful participation of all residents and all relevant stakeholders in the seat of Bulawayo policy making and decision making process uh, should guide the development agenda of the city said in Goma there via the Bupra statement. Quite interesting there uh, coming mm -hmm. from Bupra. Well, you know that you have now have new councillors, right? Mm -hmm. The issue of service delivery I said at the first, at the, at, at the chief cost on in terms of uh, developing Bulawayo, I saw Coltat was asking on Twitter, how uh, can we make Bulawayo clean again? Mm -hmm. I saw Goma as well asking on Facebook, how can we make Bulawayo clean again? The agenda of service delivery one of the key priorities on top of the agenda of the new councillors. Yes, and uh, on a set uh, note, uh, we have a story here. Fire raises Mutizi flea market in Bulawayo traders count losses. Informal traders operating at the Mutizi flea market in Bulawayo lost goods, stock and valuables worth an estimated 80 million Zimbabwean dollars after the market was reduced to ashes on Tuesday night. According to a report by the fire brigade, the fire was caused by an unattended electric gadget that was left on. So, yeah, the, the market was constructed with brick, iron bars and zinc measuring 60 by 5 meters with an assortment of goods and several backyard rooms used as stores, a kitchen and a dining room. Uh, so um, we have a quote here. Um, Many families are going to suffer, including widows and orphans, because a lot of people were working here, including youth who were out of school. They said they expressed they said and expressed gratitude to the fire brigade for coming to their rescue. By moving yeah. on with the show this morning, guys, remember to follow site and all platforms, uh, Twitter, uh, that's uh, X, uh, Facebook, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, guys, it's time to be social with Asake online. We offer the following services, uh, live streaming, uh, social media adverts, programs, sponsorship, uh, mobile road shows, video filming, uh, photography, documentaries, as well as corporate events management. Uh, do call us now on plus 263-788-084339 or come to our offices at number 45 Moffat Avenue in Hillside Road. Right here, we'll have, it's time to be social with Asaki online. Yeah, and uh, as Brighton has said, don't forget to follow site on, on all uh, platforms for more updates. Remember, we have uh, great shows for you. Uh, the Breakfast Club, uh, screenshot the podcast is big. I know you guys have been looking out for it, and uh, it wasn't there last week because of the elections. Uh, screenshot the podcast is back, and yeah, a lot, a lot more shows, uh, Twitter spaces as well. I'll be having a Twitter space uh, this afternoon. Uh, we will be discussing the experiences of women and young people in the 2023 election with uh, activist Namatai Kwekweza. Right, I was looking at the government gazette last night before we went to bed, man, there was a government gazette uh, declaring Emerson Nangako as the president of Zimbabwe and also releasing all, all the names of people that made it to parliament, uh, that made it to council, uh, that made it to the youth quota and also well, that made it to the women's quota. So I'm looking at the names of women that made it under the women's quota here in the National Assembly. Let me just, let's just read a few names there. For Bulawayo Province, I chose them Lilos Tabile uh, from Triple C, uh, Tofa Jasmine from Triple C as well, uh, Kupe Togozani uh, from Triple C, uh, Dube Janet uh, from Triple C, and Masego Samgeliso uh, from Triple C, Mgwanda, Judith, that's uh, Zonupia, that's the Minister of State, mm -hmm. Judith Mgwanda there. And then Harare, we have uh, Shiterenika Ellen, that's Triple C, Makubire Julia, uh, that's Triple C, uh, Manga. 
mazi nga ito lina ito triple C sika chua kilati siku zaisha ito triple C and chikuinya nyasha unis grace ito zanu pf and mokoma messi then when i was browsing as well looking at the youth quarter quite an interesting names they're coming from the youth quarter just a few go, go to a few names there uh, for the youth quarter those who went remember the 10 seats for the young people there in the parliament uh, for Bulai we have evidence zana that's triple c harare we have angari zora takuzwa that's triple c and in manika land we have sakupanya stanley that's an opf machine central we have araraza emerson that's an opf uh, in the east we have uh, mudo tawanda titus that's an opf machine in the west we have ziambi Mutawa Shekal, the Sanu PF. Maswingo, we have Maunga Nidze Nalet, the Sanu PF. And Matibele North, we have Sandra, Sivanda, sorry, Sivanda uh, Lovejoy, the uh, Triple C. And also in Matibele South, we have Mushipe Tinashe Tafatwa, the Sanu PF. And lastly in Miklens, we have Mnangakwa Kudakwashe David, the Sanu PF. There. These are the young people, the 10 young people from all provinces who are going to go to parliament under the youth quota system. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting there, Brighton, and uh, yeah, uh, we wait uh, also to see how this, they are, how they're going to perform yeah. in this term, and if they are going to, you know, uh, find uh, opportunities and you know for young people and women, and if they're going to speak out uh, the issues of women and young people in Parliament there, and yeah. As we said, guys, today we're talking about Sakat Sadak and. Uh, resolving a uh, post election conflict you know um we've had so, so we've had uh, several uh, a lot of elections and almost every time they are disputed mm -hmm. and Sata comes in to you know uh for talks and 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 what not and want to hear from you guys what are your thoughts on that do you think it works and you know uh maybe even your expectations is do you think there is ever going to be a call uh, for action to say, okay, Zimbabwe, let's do things this way? But yeah, I see we've been joined by guests. Let's hear uh, what they have to say. Good morning, finals. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, I was just laughing when um, Brighton was, uh, you know, imitating what the Gabonese president was saying, make some noise, make some noise. Um, it was very, you know, uh, you know, d distressing to see that, uh, you know, that a man has to reach that stage where he begs uh, for mercy from the international community, yet he subjugated his own people for so long. But that's the African story. If you look at that region, uh, that belt uh, is six countries uh, that have, had coups in the last, um, you know, uh, few years. So it's very depressing, uh, the trajectory that Africa is taking, uh, equally so. Having said that, make some noise, make some noise, that resonates with Zimbabwe. As Zimbabweans, uh, the citizens making enough noise uh, in terms of this particular election or the impasse that we find ourselves in, if the people on the ground are not, not making enough noise, if they don't feel aggrieved and make enough noise, I don't think uh, the bodies that we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, approach the United Nations, SADC, uh, will, uh, you know, um, take that as, uh, that seriously. Because if it's only triple C raising this issue, because this is a Zimbabwean problem uh, for starters. So my issue becomes then if there isn't enough traction uh, with those on the ground, those that voted, uh, you know, raising their disdain, their concerns about the electoral process, about the uh, uh, eventual outcome, then it becomes a futile exercise. Uh, you know, it, it's just going to be procedural for Triple C to approach the courts. Because if a fact finding mission is sent into Zimbabwe, are the people on the ground going to resonate with what happened? Yes, there were irregularities, but other, in other countries, people would have been in the streets. We are not advocating for people to go on the streets, but I'm just saying in other countries, in other democratic jurisdictions, people would have shown their disdain on the streets, but that hasn't happened in Zimbabwe. So whether people are scared, whether people are satisfied, I'm not too sure where that takes us as a country. But without the people um, showing their disdain, I think we hit a cul-de-sac on this one. Uh, as for the issue with... Um, Sadiq, there are two issues here. Uh, if you look at the states around, whether you talk about Tanzania, you talk about Namibia and South Africa, they have congratulated Munanga Gwa passively uh, as, uh, you know, they send congratulatory messages. And Cyril Ramaphosa, when he was asked about the question why he had congratulated, uh, you know, the president in this disputed election, 
he said he was only responding to Priscilla's gum Priscilla Gumba's um, pronouncements. That's why, why he congratulated the president of Zimbabwe. So he's not going to turn back on those, you know, congratulatory messages that he has already sent. So what message does it send to uh, the opposition in Zimbabwe and the Zimbabwean people that are aggrieved? And Swapo, uh, the, uh, the uh, Namibian um, ruling party, has also done the same. Uh, Tanzania have done the same. So you're asking yourself, does the Sadiq region actually resonate with the suffering that the Zimbabwean people um, you know, are going through? Uh, that leaves a bigger question then. The question is, if President Mnangagwa decides to form the government and fast track the swearing in of MPs, what happens then to all the opposition MPs? Do they go to the ceremony? That's a dichotomy on its own. Do they go and rubber stamp that because by attending the swearing in and accepting that they are MPs, their, <laughs> their protest becomes futile from uh, an outsider's perspective. So I'm not too sure what you know the, the, the Menanga government will throw. The last part will be uh, on the issue to do with uh, I saw Nick Mangwana's tweet where he says um, the static report is just an advisory dossier. So what it does, it gives recommendations. It will never advocate uh, to, to, to say the um, election must be null and void. Yes, Nevis Mumba was quoted on uh, News Africa saying this um, you know, election was not free and fair. But when he was pressed to say should it be null and void, uh, he was very cryptic. He couldn't give a definitive answer, even though there were undertones to say this should be null and void. So the report will come with recommendations and they'll say exactly what they've said from the preliminary report. But I don't think it will force Zimbabwe into a rerun of an election. So um, it, it's, it's a bitter pill. So in closing, I'll say, if the Menangagwa government decides to swear in MPs as soon as possible, then there's a dichotomy for the opposition. Having said that, Triple C did well by denying ZANU PF uh, a two thirds majority. That's a very good starting point, in spite of everything else that has happened. Uh, on that note, I'll stop here. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, our finals, for sharing your thoughts. Well, our finals says it's, it's going to be a pita pill. Well, let's hear what others have to say this morning. Guys, but just joining us this morning and talking about SADAC and the, their role in solving post-election conflict. Remember, there was the issue of Madagascar and uh, Zimbabwe again in 2013, mm -hmm. and that forced us to go to for a dialogue. Is SADAC uh, willing also, maybe in terms of uh, dialogues and so on, what's the role of SADAC in solving conflict? And uh, can SADAC also nullify an election? Or is just this... Uh, so I remember, I remember Robert Mugabe once was speaking in the dialogue, when he was speaking about the issue of uh, uh, we can, can pull out of SADAC if they, don't, if they act fine and shady. Mm -hmm. So can SADAC also nullify an election of a sovereign state? What's the role of SADAC in solving post-election conflict? Let's go to another speaker there this morning. Anjabulo, good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm hoping you guys are all good. Um, it's quite a very interesting uh, topic that you guys are raising here. And uh, Zimbabwe, uh, looking at the history of Zimbabwe with SADAC, Zimbabwe has always been a defiant uh, member of SADAC. Some of you, if you can go back to uh, the days of Mugabe, there have been issues. Uh, SADAC has always raised issues on Zimbabwe, and Zimbabwe has always refused to comply with a lot of uh, SADAC standards and SADAC issues. So we almost have a rogue government that does not adhere to its own laws and the laws and the compliance of the SATAC region. This is why you'll find us as a country that uh, we are being isolated uh, by so many uh, partners in, in, in the region. This is why we are, even when Zimbabwe is crying and saying, no, we are under sanctions. Uh, there, there is no one who is coming to our rescue in terms of coming in and becomes the bridge uh, that will connect us uh, to the rest of the world, like what was happening uh, during Smith's time, during Rhodesia. Remember, they had very 
enablers like uh, South African government of that time that will enable uh, Rhodesia to trade with the rest of the world. Ask yourself, why is Zimbabwe being isolated? It's because we, we have a very defined government, a government that will not even adhere to its own laws that it has said, because this whole election uh, is not about Triple C, it's not about ZANU, it's not about ZAP, it's not about any political party. It is about the laws of Zimbabwe uh, that um, were not followed uh, during the election. And uh, when people are speaking to uh, to 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 uh, to the unfreeness and uh, the whole issues that have to do with uh, uh, the the elections, they are not speaking to say Zanu Triple C won. Zanu did not win. No, they are speaking to say with with the procedures to have an election followed and in zimbabwe we have um, a, a challenge of what we call the very same people that break the law that come through the coup they want to use the law to defend their illegality you see right now we have a distorted and a, a, a shame of an election huh? they did not follow the laws but they will take the very same laws to try and defend the position that they illegally got into. Because if you used illegal ways to get into power, it doesn't make you legal, even if you're going to use law to try and defend your position. So th these are some of the challenges I think as Zimbabweans we are facing. And uh, when the SATA came in, it raised issues of the laws of Zimbabwe. It didn't raise issues of the laws of Sadak. It raised, uh, when you follow the preliminary report, it speaks to the laws. How we, the Zimbabweans and ZEC, did not follow our own laws as Zimbabweans. But guess what? We, we have a government that will always blame everyone else except itself. This is why it, what has made it impossible for certain uh, conflicts to be resolved in Zimbabwe. For we, we have, I think we have the longest unresolved conflicts, if, if not in the world, if not even in the rest of Africa. Um, we're still talking of issues that have to do with ground. Still, that's a conflict that is still unresolved, 37 years later. We have Banam Rambatsuina, we have uh, 2018 shootings, we have 2008 killings. It's still an unresolved conflict. And right now we have started another one. And the SAT could come into its finding, to its recommendation. We'll talk about this in 2050. Still looking back and saying, but what, uh, what happened in 2023 election? So the, the only thing that's needed to resolve the Zimbabwean issues, it is for the people of Zimbabwe to stand up and demand their rights. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who, 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 who has done it. Wrong is wrong. And that should be the voice that the Zimbabweans speak with to say, we won't accept this because it is wrong. We don't care who is behind that. So that, that's how that should be our stance as Zimbabweans. So that the external uh, uh, people, when they come in, they will find us to have made a concrete decision on what we want as Zimbabweans. But if you still have enablers of lawbreakers, then SADAC's remedy won't work because others are supportive of the wrong that was done. Uh, thank you, uh, Brighton and Nonsense. Well, thanks so much, Jablo, for that. But also, not for me, my key point was on the issue of uh, when the election, started, the election observer mission came to Zimbabwe, right? They gave their report, their press statement to say uh, this is this the, the election didn't um, it was not in line with certain principles, right? It was not in line with the electoral act. But however, we're seeing other presidents of different countries, right, who are part of SATA congratulating. This is our president. Mm -hmm. But however, this report said this. Mm -hmm. And Nick Mangwana said, no, uh, we're only uh, going to lead, 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 listen to the report and also implement the recommendations once we're in government. Mm -hmm. I ask myself, <laughs> what then is the role of SATA observer missions? Mm -hmm. And also the role of SATA in self solving conflict? Yeah, I mean, if, if, they, if they can't uh, put anything to yeah. action to say no, uh, this, this was uh, not done according yeah. to the law, so 
in, redo that or do this or do A, B, C so that everything is considered uh, legitimate and whatnot. So, I mean, as you're saying, at the end of the day, uh, as Fino said, that it's up to the Zimbabwean yeah. government to either uh, take it up or just leave it. So, yeah. yeah, let's move on to another speaker there this morning. Let's go to Malik Mpereki. Good morning, Malik Mpereki. Yeah, good morning. How are you? How is everyone? Uh, uh, so my contribution is 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 just uh, straightforward. I think um, first of all, besides besides being too excited, we need to know what is legally possible and what is politically acceptable within our political context. Number one, uh, we need to remember that SADC and AU these are international uh, observer, observer missions, and they are just like EU and uh, uh, in all other multilateral uh, institutions that come to observe. So uh, we also need to know that SADC has no court and there's no enforcement capacity to implement the SADC principles. And also remember that uh, Zim elections, they are not uh, special very much in the sense that uh, all 14 SADC member states, they all do elections. And they are violated the most, not in Zimbabwe. Uh, in Congo, believe me, my brothers, uh, it is where the people do disappear. There are wars, there are civil wars, and uh, the elections themselves, uh, there are too many assassinations. And you also need to know that, um, uh, number three, uh, the effect of it in the in the post, uh, post-election post period is that uh, we all need to remember that uh, uh, since, I think, 2015, Zimbabwe has been on a drive of re-engagement. So that drive of re-engagement is, and all that money is thrown down the drain because we can now no longer, uh, I think it's, it is now more difficult, actually, to, to rejoin the Commonwealth and to, uh, to rejoin the IMF and the World Bank. And the issues of, uh, of, of the data, it is, it is much more difficult uh, uh, today and tomorrow for, for, for the data to be scraped because everyone will be saying, uh, we, are, we are taking a review of, of, of SADAC, what your region what your original peers, what your original peers say about how you conduct your elections and and the issues around around its um, legitimacy. But I think um, as, as always, time time is all, all wounds. in Zimbabwe since two thousand two thousand two thousand five two thousand eight two thousand thirteen two thousand and eighteen, all those eighteen, all, all those eight or so harmonized elections, uh, have always been. Not free, not credible, but nothing practical is 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 come out of it. But the advantage that I think uh, is is um, is usable at the moment is the fact that um, uh, Triple C now is a two thirds is it has avoided a two thirds majority win. So this means that uh, a, in order to avoid a government shutdown, there is need for a certain sense of accommodation and. In negotiations and discussion between the ruling party and the party that uh, in Triple C is a party that can uh, make a two make make uh, make uh, budgets and and new laws possible. So I think uh, uh, with all things uh, within the political context, I think uh, there is a better tomorrow because. Uh, the triple C is is a pal is 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 avoided the truth is major majority for some people. So one way or the other, the triple C is going to come and play ball because they cannot say we are not coming to parliament and Zek cannot order a, a rerun or a redo of, of elections before a concord. And we all know that at the concord they, they will not win. So uh that that is my my my, my submission to this. Thank you. Well, thank you so much uh, for that contribution. Quite interesting contribution coming there from Africa uh, on the issue of SATAC and also solving post-election conflict. Let's go to another speaker there this morning. Let's go to Zapu spokesperson. Um, so of good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Uh, good morning, Side. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I think what we need to um, observe is that uh, the wheels for forming a, a new government are uh, already in process. Zanu PF is um, moving with speed to form a new government. In my view, they are doing uh, this f- to achieve two things. Number one, to fast track uh, the formation of the government uh, in order to avoid um, the 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 um, talks by the opposition that this was fr- not free and not fair. And number two. 
they are putting the pre- pressure on the opposition to yield. Uh, I say so because the government has gazetted already the results of the elections, and uh, this was done uh, with so much speed and the efficiency that has never been displayed by Zek. So we must understand that from a way it stands. And secondly, uh, we must uh, uh, also understand that uh, the position by SADAC uh, observer groups is such that um, the elections were clearly not free and not fair, and therefore the results uh, not credible. But what we have seen with SADAC leaders, uh, who are member states uh, from the observer mission, is that uh, they normally, especially their heads of states, they normally engage on government to government level, they normally engage on institutional levels. So no one should blame the presidents in SADAC for sending uh, congratulatory messages uh, to Emerson Mnangagwa because they respond to what government institutions uh, speak to. But what we must clearly understand now is that uh, the election results themselves uh, are discredited and uh, these heads of states are aware of it. They are, however, facing, uh, uh, they are in, uh, in between a hard place and a rock because they want desperately so, including South Africa, desperately want the Zimbabwean uh, problem uh, solved because uh, Zimbabwe has been a problem uh, child for years now and it is destabilizing their region. South Africa is under immense pressure from uh, Zimbabweans. Their health care system is under immense pressure from Zimbabweans. Uh, employ- unemployment is rising because of us. So they want this issue resolved. Their only challenge is that uh, the majority of uh, African SADC, Afri- uh, SADAC countries who are in power now are liberation movements. Their challenge is that they, they, they look at the SADC geopolitics and see that if their neighbors uh, are not uh, liberation movements, like ZANU-PF, like what happened in Zambia, they, the ANC fears for their lives. They are scared to death to imagine their neighbors, Zambia, Zimbabwe, under governments that are not liberation movements. That is why they are throwing everything. And they reports that the Secretary General of the ANC Figil Mbalula has been given money by ZANU-PF to play an active Barakashi role on, uh, on social media uh, because of this fear. So as much as they want the solutions uh, to the Zimbabwean problem, they, 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 they fear a, a regime that is not the liberation movement. The solution to this embryo is that it, 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 it can never be uh, us uh, 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 relying and taking our lives and our future with SADAC. SADAC have done the best, especially the, the observer mission. They've done the best for, for Zimbabwe now. The next thing is for us to create. I see we are discussing the, uh, uh, about SADAC solving post-election conflict. I believe sincerely that there is no conflict yet. Zimbabweans must now escalate it to a proper conflict, a proper conflict where Zimbabwe stands, Zimbabweans stand up and uh, 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 withdraw the line between the suffering people of Zimbabwe against uh, government institutions uh, like ZEC, government institutions like uh, state apparatus that is used to subjugate and, uh, and uh, steal the people's rights. It is at that stage that uh, SADAC will come and SADAC will make a decisive uh, decision. Right now, where we are saying they stole, they say we didn't steal. You stole, they didn't steal. Don't expect SADAC to do more than what they have done. Zimbabweans now must draw the line and say, on this side, they are poor and suffering Zimbabweans. On the other side, there is uh, institutions uh, that have uh, a, 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 a incestuous relationship between ZANU-PF and these institutions. It is at that stage that SADAC will take us seriously and SADAC will help us find a proper solution. Thank you very much. Well, thanks so much. As I was spoke today, that some sort of speaking about the issue of geopolitics and the role of SADAC in terms of solving post-election conflict. Quite interesting there. What is yeah. raising there? Yeah, quite interesting, really, and you know, it really gives a perspective to what is happening there. Uh, let's hear from another speaker. Good morning, Ghetto. 
Keto, are you there? Good morning. Yes, yeah, please. Good morning, can you hear me? Contribution. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know what? I think we have to be honest. Um, the problem that I have with, uh, with, with, with opposition uh, politicians is that I, I, quit, I uh, compare them with uh, drug dealers because a drug dealer is the most ruthless, heartless person on the planet. He can get his mother killed. He doesn't, he doesn't care. So if you look at the opposition party leaders, when they would lie straight in their faces to their people on things they actually know that are not true and run with it, I think it's the most cruel thing to ever do. Now, <clears throat> look, it, 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 coming back to the report that uh, Never Mumba did, the reason why you are seeing that now there is uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, elders of the, the panel of elders from Saturday that have come, Never Mumba, he did well, what what he did was was, was not correct according to this uh, according to the sub uh, 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 Sadak rules. <laughs> Keto, are you there? Yes, All right, you seem to have lost Keto. They were trying to get uh, him back again. Yeah. To his are you there? All right, you have lost him there. Keto, I've sent you the mic to become a speaker again. Uh, I've sent you that mic. Uh, please do accept that mic this morning. Quite interesting there, what point he was driving. But yeah, we're going to get him back on the line again. Let's go to another speaker there this morning. I see we have uh, Konzani. Konzani, no visitor. Good morning. Konzani? Morning, 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 beautiful people. <laughs> Yeah, morning, beautiful people. Uh, uh, thank you, Syed, for the space and uh, everyone on the podium and uh, the listeners. Yeah, I was just following what Ghetto <laughs> wanted to say. Um, uh, um, I, I don't know what he wanted to say. I don't know whether he can come in and then we're listening to him. I think he's there now. Um, if if I we can allow him <laughs> to finish his, uh, and then I will come after him. Is that okay? No, please go. You go ahead. Then we say take it after you. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Um. He, with regards to you know, uh, you know the the the, the Sadak uh, report. I mean, Sadak hasn't been uh, firm uh, for 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 a long time. We, we you know we used to complain that you know uh, <laughs> Sadak was toothless uh, you know for a long time, but. You know, there are people here, people like uh, Advocate Herbert and, you know, so many others. We used to debate about these things. And, uh, you know, um, we also, you know, mentioned that, you know, uh, it was going to be a blessing, you know, for Zimbabwe. For, you know, now that HH, you know, uh, was now in power in Zambia because of what he stands for, you know. You know, we want ethical leaders in, in that region. And we highlighted that institutions are institutions because of people that are leading them. And then when HH came in, uh, got that influential position, we knew that he was going to stand, you know, for the truth. He wasn't going to filter anything whatsoever. He was going to call a sped a sped. And this is what happened uh, recently. Uh, because of you know the elections in Zimbabwe that were flawed, they 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 gave a report that 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 tallied with with what we saw as as, as Zimbabweans, and I believe, you know, now there is a change, there is a shift, uh, in terms of you know uh, taking you know that region you know forward. Obviously, it's going to be not easy because a lot of you know uh, people or presidents that are in there are you know pro you know, revolutionary. Um, so they, they are going to resist. But I think Sadak is going to do more on our behalf. But but yes, I understand the people that are saying that, you know, uh, as Zimbabweans, we need to be at the forefront. We, we This complex war is above politics. We cannot leave it to political parties. We have to also come together as Zimbabweans and challenge what is ha what has been happening for the past 43 years this is our country so we have the right to come together and 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 reverse whatever the government has been doing 
you know, rigging election, doing all sorts, doing despicable things. And a lot of people have been speaking about these things. And and um, some people say it, um, you know, some some political parties were, were uh, some presidents were, were congratulating uh, Nangagwa. That is one. We understand the reason why they are doing it. Um, I mean, you know, the 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 Al Jazeera documentary spoke volumes in terms of corruption, rampant corruption. You know, we used to talk about corruption, whatever, this and that, but we did not know <laughs> the extent of it. But now as Zimbabweans or even Africans or, you know, the global community, we know the monies that have been stolen by, by, by this junta. And these, these things have also spilled over to South Africa. We look at a president like, like Ramaphosa, Ramaphosa is also under pressure. The Palapala issues and also, you know, uh, this corruption that we saw in Zimbabwe spilling into South Africa and also, yes, admitting that, you know, something has to be done. The only government that did not admit to it, you know, 100% was Zimbabwe. So, you know, by default, someone like, like Ramaphosa will support you know, Mnangagwa, uh, because they are, uh, they, are, they are the same. They have stolen from our nations. So they, they will try to protect themselves. Someone said, yes, they are scared of, 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 of uh, you know, the opposition parties. And that's correct. You know, Mbalula has been making empty noise for far too long. So our friends as Zimbabweans are people like, you know, organizations like EFF. EFF has challenged, you know, um, the current government in South Africa, they've put them in the corner. And they've also highlighted that they knew that, you know, things were not going to change suddenly like that. It's a marathon. That's what EFF people said. They also spoke about captured institutions in South Africa, also captured state, state. but it's, 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 it's not worse as Zimbabwe. And they said they will continue fighting, putting in the corner. Uh, you know, uh, South Africa is voting in 2024. And I believe, you know, uh, thing, uh, uh, Ramaphosa is going to really, you know, uh, fess the music. So uh, the, 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 all I can say is that, you know, as Zimbabweans, let's identify people that are for us. As I said, EFF is, can, is our friend and other people that are opposing what we're seeing, you know, across the region. And 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 I believe Sadak is now, you know, uh, turning out to be a good oppos a, a good um, organization because of people like HH. Obviously, they are under pressure because there are so many people that are, you know, are, are, are supporting the revolutionary parties. But nothing is impossible. You know, there is a powerful shift. Even in West Africa, we see things that are happening. People have opened their eyes. So as Zimbabweans as well, it is our time to put pressure, uh, to come together, because, you know, when we come as a team, we achieve more. But if we decide to go solo, we always lose to a team. You look at people like Itai Zamara, they tried their best, but we're not supporting them. And that's why they were an easy target to this junta government. But now if we go in numbers, we are going to get what we want. It's not easy. Because Zimbabwe has got a lot of resources. So for these people to give us our country back, it will take us to say enough is enough. Let's come together. Let's fight these people. Even going to the, you know, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate on the ground, it's, it's something that we should also consider. Because I, I heard some people here saying, um, they are scared that these people are going to kill us. They've been killing us for a long time. Corruption is it has killed more people than the Holocaust. So let's fight these people. There will be casualties, but you know it, it will be worth it for us to, to gain our country back. If it means going to the streets, let's go. There are so many things that we can do to put pressure on these people. We do not want them. That's the elephant in the room. ZANU PF, we don't want it anymore. So guys, let's come together and put pressure on them. And then all the international bodies who support us. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you, beautiful people. Thank you for the beautiful space. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Konzanani, for sharing your thoughts uh, there. Um, Guys, uh, please, let's be brief. Uh, uh, you know, we have to end at 9.30 today. So uh, please, let's be brief in giving our submissions so that uh, all the speakers that are already lined up, lined up can uh, have a chance to speak. Um, let's be brief. Uh, I, 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 well, let's move on to another speaker. Yeah, before we move on mm-hmm. to the speaker, you know what? There was a, a saying uh, made by Julius Malema, the leader of the AFF, saying the Sadak was a useless uh, door kind of. Mm-hmm. But over the past years, Sadak has been making these reports after election to say nations were free and fair, right? But now we've seen uh, this uh, Sadak like, uh, observation led by uh, Dr. Nevas Mumba saying, yes, the elections were done peacefully, but however, they did not meet these standards from Sadak or from the Electoral Act and from the Constitution of Zimbabwe. What does it make in terms of Sadak changing their role or their stance in terms of solving post election conflict? Let's hear from another speaker there this morning. Let's go to Lord Master. Lord Master, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <clears throat> Please do go ahead with the contribution. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what conflict we have, uh, or is it uh, an assertion that people are perpetuating? Uh, from where I'm sitting and where I'm understanding, there is no conflict in the election. Uh, Munangagwa won the election and there's always like any opposition party or any individual runs for elections when they lose as Donald Trump did in the last election they oppose losing we should be mindful and be very careful not to be dragged by individuals personal gain uh, to navigate and use us as a tool for political mileage Chamisa is doing exactly that and that is wrong you saw uh, the likes of Mahiri accepting the elections and they're now being put in a corner to uh, denounce them simply because Chamisa is not president. That's not how democracy works. If you want to live in a society with democracy and perpetuate or encourage democracy, you have to accept defeat. Chamisa, this election was not rigged. He lost it. Regardless of what we all can agree, that were mishaps by Zach. Munangago did not rig this election. He won it free and fair. Uh, the aspect of credibility with regards to political discourse, 100%. The aspect of ZEC misconduct, we can then question that. But we cannot then pe- uh, penalize Munangago because institutions did not do their job 100%. Every institution in the world, including the United States, including the United Kingdom, when they have elections, they do have these problems. So I think it's time we embrace and we get ready for the inauguration and we accept that the election is done and dusted and move on and accept also uh, Sadak's stance on the election. But again, as it's been stated, it's a prefix of ensuring that we fix our elections going forward. I would advocate for Zek being disbanded after this and creating another board that will run the election. But as is, it's done, it's tested, we have to move forward. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you very much, our Lord Master, for that uh, contribution. Yeah, quite, quite interesting, interesting. What he's saying know, again, he's disbanding saying... <laughs> Zach, uh, but also at the same time accepting the results. I don't, I don't understand what Lord Master is saying there. Mm-hmm. So let's disband Zach for the next election, but however, mm-hmm. let's accept this one. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's move on to the speaker there this morning. Pipi Jimpo, for what? Bobo, Bobo, Anjan. Abampofu. All right, we seem to be not getting Bobo Anpofu there this morning. Let's go to another speaker. Pento, good morning. Uh, good morning, Nonsasa and uh, Brighton. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak. First and foremost, I want to say it um, absolutely. The opposition lost. And every time they cry rigging, but they can't prove the rigging. Now they didn't uh, make a court case uh, application within the 48 hours which are required so that the ballot boxes can be opened. They know if they go to the court, they will be asked about the, ball, the residue. But anyway, I want to go to Sadak. Sadak is not going to solve our problems. You know, they were just going to tell us to go back and dialogue. Then all those people who are grieved to follow the country laws. This mess was created by Neves Mumba, who did a hatchet, a hatchet job for, for HH, at the BS of HH, catered to his bosses in Brussels, uh, Washington, and London. That report is scandalous. There was nothing he observed there. There were no observations except the ESA 
and allegations. This was taken from uh, the CC's handbook, and I'm sure Sevia Kasugwere also inserted a paragraph in there. Um, anyway, at the end of the day, nothing is going to happen. Already, uh, South Africa and Namibian observers have given the elections the thumbs up, and these are liberation movements. They will protect each other. They know that there's geopl geopolitics at play, which is trying to get back our country because they are too nice. But we've got people like Ichilema and Chamisa who are being used to fight for the imperialists. This is not going to work. You can see the EU and the USA, they've came out of their closest gingerly and are putting pressure on some member states of Sadak to punish the NPF. The elections in Zimbabwe did not start yesterday. They started in 1980 and people said the NPF cheated. 1985, 1990, 1995, 2000. How come there was no such pressure? And other SADAC uh, countries have had problems. Mozambique elections have never been accepted. That's why Rinamo stayed at Gorogosa in Angola. Even HH had to go to court to get a result. Why is this pressure on Zimbabwe? The same should happen. The same should happen. And I'm going to say, you, there are people who are encouraging people to go to the streets. Chamisa got 1.9 people and ED got 2.3 people, million people. What if he, these people also go to the streets? There's this misnomer which always says the people, the people, as if the supporters are not people. You must say us, CC supporters. We will say us, the uh, NPF supporters. Not to say the people, the people. The people must go to the streets. The supporters can also go to the, to the streets. That would be a dog eat dog affair. Is that, is that what we want? They will say, oh, we are defending our victory. Because the victory was sweet. Was sweet. He did work very hard for this. Now some people want to spoil it because they were not working hard enough. Chamisa must go back and try to resonate with the people. Thank you. There's no real well, that's the, Yeah, thanks so much, Bernard, for that. Quite interesting what Bernard is saying there. Yeah, on the issue of defending the vote. Yeah, let's go to the speaker. Guys, let's, let's two, two minutes uh, before we wrap up the space. Uh, so let's take two more speakers and then we'll wrap up the space, right? Yeah. Let's go to Pepe Timpov. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Good morning, Nonsalta. Uh, good morning, everybody on the space. Am I audible? Yes, you are clear, sir. Please do go ahead to the contribution this morning. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think briefly I would just say uh, in as much as these uh, elections are in, in a test uh, of credibility, it also goes the same to, 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 to the SADAC. Because here now, uh, if the mission that they sent to Zimbabwe to go and observe elections came out with a report to say the elections were not free and fair and therefore the result would be illegitimate, I think this is where SADAC would have to make sure that they take a stance and point to the right direction, which is to say these elections is either they are redone or they make up a way of trying to have the two parties work together and accommodate a, a, an election that will be conducted freely and fairly in the just near future uh, than to say uh, we are going to wait for 2028. Uh, that is not feasible because the election was not a, a, a free and fair and credible. So I think basically... What we have to do now is take advantage of the, 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 the recommendation that SATAC, the SATAC mission has made and let us Zimbabweans uh, take a stance to say we go out and we go all the way out and defend our vote because we know how we voted, we know who we voted for. If it means that it's a dog, it dog, like somebody is saying, I think this is high time whereby Zimbabweans should go for that. It's enough. We can't afford another five years of these people. It has been enough. It's so disheartening. Thank you so much, Brighton and Netland. Well, thank you so much, uh, Bibi Jim Pofu, for that contribution. Quite interesting. Now, uh, let's wrap up the show with Brigadier. Good morning, Brigadier. Uh, good morning, uh, Said. Uh, thank you, guys, for, for this space. Yeah, it's um, we, we, are, we are waiting for the final report from, from SADC. Uh, so many people are just focusing on the, on the, on the main uh, SADC, SEOM report, 
but they're also ignoring what uh, the SADC Electoral Advisory Council, uh, SIAC, uh, also reported. Um, these two bodies, they, they work hand in, hand in hand, but uh, they have different agendas. Uh, the the SADC uh, Advisory Council report, I also managed to look at it. Uh, it speaks to the same issues that uh, the main SADC SEOM report uh, uh, alludes to. Because SIAC is a technical structure that advises SADC on all the electoral processes and the enhancement of democracy in a Southern African country. So there are issues that can be ignored. Uh, if you go to, to the SADC uh, uh, principles and guidelines, uh, they, they, they list uh, several things, should be about 11 principles that each and every member state must follow uh, to include civic and voter education, uh, electoral justice, uh, uh, free association, assembly and expression, uh, and equal access to media by all parties. But if you look at all those factors, uh, even if even even a bystander will see that the playing field was not free and fair. So it's not about the election result, but it's about the whole process leading to the election that uh, both these uh, SADC uh, bodies are looking into. And if, 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 if you zero in on those factors, you'd find that in all the other observer missions, whether it's Commonwealth, is the EU, uh, it's, it's the AU, they, they, they speak to the same things that we, we, we all noticed. So the Zimbabwean issue is not just a one-day event, the elections. No, uh, the Zimbabwean issue has been ongoing. The, the look at what has happened to the economy. It's been a, a long time of conflict uh, along along the, the electoral processes, the democracy, and so on. So Zimbabwe is becoming a burden to to, 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 to Africa at large, to SADC uh, specifically. Uh, the pressure that we are causing in neighbor states in terms of uh, uh, putting pressure in the health services, uh, the employment, and, and so on. So Zimbabwean issue is now a topical uh, issue, uh, which uh, SADC... SADC cannot overturn the, the election results in Zimbabwe, but SADC who, uh, who play when there's electoral dispute, uh, SADC has the role to, to play as a mediator when there's electoral dispute. So what I'm likely going, uh, seeing is uh, SADC is going to recommend for dialogue between the two uh, main protagonists, uh, that is the Triple C and ZANU PF, uh, Emerson Mnangagwa and Nelson Chamisa, for the sake of the region, for the sake of Zimbabwe, uh, the, the voice of the people cannot be ignored. Uh, then there are also another dynamic that is at play. They they also try to put uh, a bit of wisdom into Emerson Nangagwa. Remember that uh, Zanpe failed to get the two thirds majority, and uh, by law, this is Emerson Nangagwa's last term. So they will, they will try to put some sense to him to to say, be the bigger man, be a statesman, let there be dialogue. So I I think the only way forward is dialogue. Uh, and on the, end, on the other hand, uh, to bring ZANPF, we know ZANPF is a bit arrogant, to bring ZANPF to the, to the, to the discussion table, pressure must continue. Uh, the Zimbabwean people have to, to have to rise, whether locally, whether internationally. We have to exert pressure so that there will be much uh, attention on Zimbabwe. Uh, because Zimbabweans want to move forward, and the region also wants to move forward. If you look at the geopolitics of Africa, you see what is happening in Western Africa, all those coups that are happening in SADC is trying to avert uh, such scenarios coming down to this region. So yeah, there will be much diplomatic uh, uh, pressure uh, in these coming days, especially after the final report. And I don't, I, I'm not seeing the final report deviating from the preliminary report. And uh, yeah, that that would be a breeding ground for for dialogue, uh, whilst, uh, uh, because we all want our country to move forward. At the end of the day, we are all Zimbabweans. Zimbabwean belongs to all of us. It doesn't belong to Triple C. It doesn't belong to ZANU PF. It's Zimbabwe for all. So I'm seeing the best solution out of this. Uh, it's not a court uh, challenge, but it's going to be a dialogue that is going to be uh, uh, administered by the uh, SADC region. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Pekatia, for those sentiments. We are all Zimbabweans. We all want Zimbabwe to develop and move forward. Uh, that is sentiments there. And we all want dialogue and peace and unity. After all, we are all Zimbabweans before anything. Quite interesting yeah. comment there coming from Pekatia this morning. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this morning on Asake, for sharing your views and thoughts as well. Uh, uh, remember, uh, please do join me this afternoon. That is at 2 p.m. Uh, where I'll be having uh, a discussion with activist uh, Namatai Kwekweza and uh, 
Because Kona DBT from uh, Ekaya Vote and Community Podium will be discussing the experiences of young people and women uh, during the 2023 elections. Remember, guys, on the 9th of September, there is King Mzeliga's Day. King Mzeliga's commemoration is responsible to you by MMCA. It's going to be held in Lila on the 222 kilometers along Old Gwanda Road, right in Bulaya. Uh, so if you are in around Bulaya, please do attend that event there. That's King Mzeliga's Day, uh, King Mzeliga's commemorative day there so guys uh party no party regalia is allowed to that event uh, so come dressed in your traditional outfit and also traditional food to be uh, cooked there uh, so come and celebrate uh, this is brought to you by and mmc from myself brighton nobody's been loving out with you this morning guys it's bye for now